Greetings, salty dogs. Thank you for joining me for this week's video. This is Ken, and I am bringing to you a video today about live lining, live bunker for striped bass. And uh, the fishing has been excellent in my area. Not a lot of jumbo size cows, we're not talking 40, 50 pounders, but plenty of slot size fish with occasional over slot size fish, so 35 inches or greater. And um, this here was my second trip on my boat for 2022 back in the late part of June and we came across the bunker um, this trip was on a Tuesday my first trip was on a Friday morning uh, before and the bunker were stacked here we did well we caught fish and uh, the bunker was still in this area and the fish were still here with them. So uh, we rolled in, we found the bait, we snagged the bait as you see me doing here and then we fished the bunker on three-way rigs. And I'll get more into that later. And I'm going to talk about it in future videos as well. So, when you're snagging bunker and trying to catch stripers and bluefish, it's not always snag and drop. And snag and drop, as it's known, is not legal anymore. That means uh, catching the bunker on the snagger and just leaving it in the water and live lining it for the bass or bluefish that's not legal you have to now use circle hooks for the live bait fishing to be legal but you still have to get the bait and I did not have my cast net handy so the bunker snagger has been my go-to means of getting that accomplished and the other issue with uh, throwing a live uh, a cast net is that I don't have a live well. And that would be very problematic for throwing a cast net, getting a large number of bunker in the boat for bait, and then not having the proper means of storing them healthy to be used for bait. So um, snagging is actually the most efficient way for me to procure my bait in my present situation. Uh, I keep a couple of five gallon buckets, two, three, even four, with water in them on deck. And those bunker that I snag that don't appear to be bleeding out badly, I'll throw them in the bucket for a live bait. And the ones that are really wrecked from the damage of the snagger. I will throw on ice to have as fresh bait in the event that the bite turns off and we have to go chunking. Uh, chunking stripers can be very effective and I've been known to do it often, although not much lately. Um, I guess bait fishing is something I prefer to do a little bit more often in the boat. And when I'm on land, I like surf casting with artificial lures much better than fishing with live bait. But that's another story. So, here you see one of our nice keepers coming up. I believe this fish is a little bit over slot. And, uh... Please stay tuned, more striped bass action on the way.
Here's a quick demonstration of the rig that we're using. Uh, we're snagging our bunker, and because today fishing live bait with circle hooks is the only legal way to do it, we're using offset 9.0 owner circle hooks, and that is uh, snelled to 50 pound test fluorocarbon leader which goes to a three-way swivel. The three-way swivel is Palomar knotted to our 40-pound test braid running line. And we have a sinker loop of six inches or greater tied to the bottom of the three-way swivel. And of course, a sinker that is uh, befitting to the amount of current that you're dealing with. And just another disclaimer here, uh, I have an old boat and my fuel gauge is kind of unreliable. Now I know it's not legal to fill gas out on the water from remote tanks, but uh, we left the marina at the wee hours of the morning and the gas dock is not open. So uh, rather than take a chance on running out of gas, because I really didn't know how much gas I had in my boat tank, I just figured, well, let me be safe and uh, bring a couple of gas cans along in the event that I do run out. Uh, better that than having to call CTO and uh, be towed back in. But uh, I'm happy to report that my tank was uh, quite a bit more full than I thought, and I never had to put those remote cans in. Just wanted to let everybody know that uh, I'm being safe, and I'm doing things as legally as possible, and um, thanks for uh, listening to that disclaimer. Uh, aside from that, if you're enjoying this video and you like this content, please uh, give us a like. Give me a like. Lots of likes because that helps me out with my channel. And please consider subscribing. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to provide a lot more fun and interesting videos and educational videos this year. As opposed to the last two years, it's been tough with the pandemic, COVID, and my big relocation from Queens to Connecticut. Um, but now things are falling into place. I'm getting back into the swing of everything. And I hope to provide you with regular weekly content. So please... Tell your friends, recommend my videos, uh, join me here on this channel. Lots more fishing ahead, and thanks for being here and watching. This is Ken. Stay tuned for more striped bass action coming your way immediately. So the fish were really hot during this period and what you're going to see right here right now I drop the bunker in the water and a bass comes right up and grabs it. <laughs> I couldn't even get the uh the rig down to the bottom. The bunker the bunker was inhaled right next to the boat and it wasn't the biggest bass, mind you. Uh I'd be lucky if it was actually a legit keeper, but uh that was just ferocious. Uh, it's rare to see that kind of action. Just crazy. Another important element of this type of fishing is taking care of your bait 
You don't want the bait to just die. You have to keep it alive. A lot of times, unless it's alive and swimming around looking kind of healthy, the bass may not have any interest. So you have to keep your bait in good shape. And what I'm doing here, changing out the water in the buckets, you don't want to leave the water in the buckets bloody. The fish will suffocate and this leaves them in better condition. Same thing for dead bunker. If you want to use them for hook baits for chunking later on, the best thing to do is keep them iced up, keep them under cover if you want the best quality bait.
ride with you. That got really bloody right now. the last one. You know the slot keeper. Respectable. Good eater. Guys on shore would be like, oh I'm so happy make the whole day catching a fish like this. And there was another fine release. So we had about uh, 30 or so slot fish all cleanly released on this day thanks to the use of uh, circle hooks, proper use of circle hooks. Uh, we probably had one or two fish over the slot size. Uh, they all swam away strong and healthy. Uh, it was a great trip. I'm um, finding great live line fishing in this area. There's the simple three-way rig. And thanks for joining me for the video. See you next time.